I'd like to start today by talking about airflow and lift, and specifically how a helicopter's rotor system generates lift. So the first concept we're going to talk about is very simple. It is called relative wind. And like I said, this is very simple. We'll take an airfoil. Here's our airfoil. And assume this airfoil is moving through the air in a certain direction. If the airfoil is moving in this direction, the relative wind is parallel to the direction of movement, but in the opposite direction. So the airfoil is moving this way, the relative wind is opposite in this direction. If the airfoil is moving this direction, well, you guessed it, the relative wind is opposite in this direction. That's pretty straightforward. The second concept we're going to talk about is rotational relative wind. Now, rotational relative wind is basically relative wind, except with an understanding of the fact that in a helicopter, we don't have a single airfoil moving in a straight line through the air. We have a rotating rotor, and that comes with some differences. So if we were to take a look at the helicopter, here's the mast from the top. The rotor system rotates around it, and the tail obviously comes out. Um, the rotor system, the blades, are rotating counterclockwise from the top. Now that means that as the blades rotate, there's a constant change in direction of the relative wind uniformly across the rotor system. That's all rotational relative wind is. Now, the rotation introduces a few additional effects, right? So as you have a rotating system, we're going to draw the mast here from the side. We've got the blades here. Well, what do we know about a rotating mass? Well, the further out you get from the center, the greater the velocity of rotation, right? So for it to map out the velocity on the curve up here at the tips, we're going to have very high velocity. And here at the mast, we're going to have a very low velocity. We could kind of map that velocity out something like this, right? So high velocity at the tips, low velocity at the roots or at the mast. Now, this is where we start to get into the concept of induced flow. An induced flow is essentially the downward component. That's the air that's being pushed down under the rotor system. Now, induced flow is proportional to velocity. What that means is that as velocity is very large at the tips, well, induced flow is very large at the tips as well in the downward direction. And just like velocity, decreasing as you reach toward the center of the mast, induced flow decreases as well to the point where it's basically nothing at the center of the rotor system. Now this concept brings us to the third um, type of airflow. That third type of airflow is called resultant relative wind. And resultant relative wind is simply rotational relative wind taking into account induced flow. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, let's draw our airfoil again here. And let's draw our rotational relative wind at some point in the rotation. We're going to have a rotational relative wind of that, that direction. So, we also know, as we just talked about, that there's an induced flow. So there's a downward component to this, and we'll just draw that here. Now, 
if we take this airfoil and sort of take a point at the leading edge and a point at the trailing edge, and we connect these with a line, let's connect them with a line, what we're going to get is this cord line. Okay? Now, if we also sum up these two vectors, the rotational relative wind and the induced flow, we're going to get another vector. It's very easy to visually sum up two vectors. You just kind of make a box out of these guys. And we get this vector. Now we can easily take this vector and simply transpose that here. So it's the same vector, it's just moved so that the tip meets the leading edge of the airfoil. Now this orange vector here, that's a resultant relative wind. And it's very important because it forms this angle here with the chord line. And this angle is your angle of attack. Angle of attack, or AOA, is what actually produces lift. As the angle of attack increases, your lift increases up to a certain point, and we'll talk about that later. But so what you're seeing here is this resultant relative wind vector, when combined with the chord line, gives you angle of attack, which gives you lift. Now, let's take a look at what happens as we sort of manipulate these vectors, right? So let's, let's erase our blue induced flow line, and let's erase our orange resultant relative wind. And let's see what happens if we have a very large induced flow. So if you have a very large induced flow, we bring our orange pen back and draw our little box here so we can calculate the new resultant relative wind. We're going to get this vector. And this vector is much steeper than what we had before. If I translate this up here, I'm going to get something that looks more like this. Now my angle of attack is much smaller. So as induced flow increases for the same uh, rotational relative wind, the amount of lift decreases. And that's very important. We'll talk about why in a series of future lessons. Thanks for watching.